Hello, and welcome to this video on using the new Band in a Box for Windows DAW plugin in Pro Tools. There's a new plugin included with Band in a Box for Windows that accesses all of the real tracks, real drums, and other content in Band in a Box, but can also be used right inside your favorite DAW without the use of the Band in a Box application. The plugin comes free with the purchase of Band in a Box and installs when you install the main program. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various ways you can use this amazing plugin in Pro Tools. If you use a different DAW, we have other videos that demonstrate the Band in a Box plugin in Ableton Live, Reaper, Cubase, Studio One, and many more. First, we'll look at an easy way to get started. I'm going to try and use a variety of different Band in a Box styles, so you'll get a good taste of the different genres, grooves, and tempos we cover. Whether you're into jazz, rock, country, R&B, or any musical styles that you can think of, there's something for you in Band in a Box. Right now, we're listening to some great funk tracks playing in Pro Tools that we created with the plugin. Everything that you're hearing was created by the Band in a Box plugin simply by typing in these chords. And you can enter any chords in any key. Then we picked this funk style and generated the tracks. I'm going to go back in time a little bit to show you just how we did it. We're going to start with a blank Pro Tools project. The Band in a Box plugin is an instrument plugin, so I'll go to Track, New, and create a new stereo instrument track. Now I'll click on the first box under Inserts A to E, and go to the multi-channel plugin, Instrument, Band in a Box DAW AAX plugin. This is the Band in a Box plugin. It's sizable, so I'll make it bigger. You can see that the chord chart is currently blank. This area here is for the different instruments in the style, and will be blank until we load a style. Here's where you can pick a style. Here you can set various musical elements such as the key, time signature, starting bar, ending bar, etc. And there's a spot for a song title, and various menus we'll look at later. In order to get some tracks, we need to pick a style and enter some chords, but not necessarily in that order. So I'll enter a chord progression first. I'll do it in the key of A, and I'll start by entering some chords. A7 at bar 1, and I'll leave that for 4 bars. Then C7 sus at bar 5, and D7 at bar 7. I'll use a handy shortcut K8 to copy the last 8 bars. I'll also add a part marker at bar 9 to outline the form of the song, and that means that the drums will play a fill in the bar right before that part marker. At bar 17, I'll add a part marker as well, but I'll click a second time to make it a B part marker, which means the drums and sometimes other instruments will change what they're playing at that part. And I'll enter B minor, then E minor at bar 19, B minor at bar 21 again, and then E7 at bar 23. I think that's good, but I'll make the end bar 24, change the ending chord to an A, and change choruses to 4 so this entire thing will repeat 4 times. Now we can select a style, either by clicking in the Select a Style area, or by going to the Select menu and picking Select a Style. Here is the list of all of the Band in a Box styles available. As you can see, there's over 6,000 to choose from. You can double click on any style in the list to hear a sample of what it will sound like. So, for example, if I filtered the list to show jazz styles, I could sample some of them.
or some rock styles. or some country styles. I think a funk style would be best for the chords that I entered, so I'll sample some funk styles. and I like this fetchin' style. You'll notice that this column shows the ideal tempo of the style, which for this one is 110 beats per minute. That does not mean you have to use it at that tempo, but if it's somewhat close to that, you'll get the best results. I'll pick the fetchin' style. I'll make the tempo slightly faster than the sample we heard in the style picker, 114 beats per minute. And I'll set that in the DAW as well. When you first add the plugin, it takes the tempo from the DAW, but since we changed it in the plugin, I need to change it in the DAW as well. So now we're ready to generate the parts. There are some custom generation options in this menu, but right now I just want all the tracks generated normally, so I'll press the top Generate button. Now it's creating the tracks. You'll notice that there are some empty green squares and an empty blue square in this area. When the tracks are ready, those squares will be filled in. The generation takes a little bit of time, so we'll skip ahead in the video a little bit. Now our tracks are finished and these squares are filled in with waveform icons, meaning they're ready to drag into the DAW. Before we do that, we can sample the tracks by pressing play in the plugin. Next, we'll drag them into the DAW, which can be done individually or as a group. This is how you drag a single track. But I'll undo that, and this is how you import all of the tracks, by dragging the blue icon. And now we have these tracks right in our DAW. During playback, the chord chart will highlight the currently playing bar. This is a great tool if you want to record your own tracks over top of this. So you can now mix the tracks, add effects, or anything you like. And, as with all real tracks and real drums, these are real instruments played by real musicians. These are not individually sampled notes, these are actual performances by some of the top studio musicians in the world, able to play over any chord progression in any key you enter. This particular style has a bass part by Alex Al, one of the most sought after bass players in LA, who played in Michael Jackson's band for over 10 years, and has also played with the likes of Stevie Wonder, Sting, and many more. On guitar is Bob Lanzetti, electric piano is covered by Jeff Lorber, and drums are played by Spot Seawright. 
I'll do a few similar but quicker examples like this with a few different styles so you can get a sense of the scope of what you can do in the Band in a Box plugin. Here I'm typing in some chords like I did before. But this time I'll pick a hard rock style. I'll set the tempo and generate the tracks. Then I'll just drag them in and I've got some great hard rock tracks in my project. I'll type some chords in again, but this time I'll pick a bluegrass style and generate the tracks. Then I drag them in when they're complete and I've got some great bluegrass tracks in my project. In addition to typing in the chords, you can open actual Band in a Box files. These could be files that you've created right in the Band in a Box app, files that other people have sent you, or even the demos that come with Band in a Box. I'll open a Band in a Box song file that features a bluesy Americana style with a resonator guitar by Eddie Dunlap, who has backed up artists like Clay Walker, T-Bone Burnett, and Mo Pitney. So now we have the entire thing entered for us. The chord progression, key, form, etc. All we have to do is generate the tracks and drag them in. Just like that, you have a great Americana style with Eddie Dunlap playing over the changes. You can also save anything that you enter here as a Bound in a Box file. One more quick demo. I'll open another file. Let's check out the demo for a rumba style. The style in this song features the legendary Alex Acuna on drums, as well as the amazing Ramon Stegnero on guitar. I'll generate, drag the tracks in, and here it's playing. Let's take a look at the installation, setup, and initial loading of the plugin. The plugin works by accessing the real tracks, real drums, and other content within your Band in a Box folder. As such, the plugin is installed during the installation of Band in a Box. It can also be installed with patch updates for Band in a Box. In either case, during the Band in a Box installation, you'll reach the part where the plugin is installed. For the majority of users, Choosing the default settings during the installation will work perfectly. Nevertheless, I'll go through the steps here and explain what's going on. Here it shows the different plugin types that are being installed. The AAX plugin is the one we're particularly concerned with in this video, but there's also a VST3 plugin that gets installed. We suggest that you use the VST3 plugin whenever your DAW supports it. A VST2 version of the plugin is also included and can be used with DAWs that don't support VST3s. There's no harm in installing all of the plugin types, they don't take up a lot of room. Here it shows where the plugins will be installed on your computer. The default Band in a Box folder is C backslash BB, but it could be something else. This needs to be the location where you installed Band in a Box earlier. If you installed Band in a Box on a different drive, for example, E, this installer would remember that. There should be no reason to change this. As for the location of the plugins, the default locations should be correct. This part of the installation is just related to the VST2 and different locations where the VST2 plugin will be duplicated. The plugin doesn't take up a lot of space, so it's fine to leave these or remove the checkboxes, whichever you'd prefer. And that's it for the installation. Once the plugin is installed, Pro Tools will automatically find it during its routine scan at startup. You can open it simply by creating a stereo instrument track and loading it as an insert in slot A. If the plugin doesn't show up, browse to C backslash program files 
backslash common files, backslash avid, backslash audio, backslash plugins, and make sure the band in a box plugin is present. If it's not, it's possible that the AAX option was unchecked during the plugin installation. Once you have established that the plugin is present in that folder, restart Pro Tools and your plugins folder will automatically be scanned again. Now let's load up that plugin again and check out some of the settings within the plugin. The host is automatically set for certain DAWs, which optimizes some of the settings for that DAW. There's no reason to change this, and auto is always the best option to leave it at. Clear renders will clear all of the audio files that are currently saved in the band in a box folder. Pro Tools automatically imports project audio to the folder where your project resides, so it should be safe to clear your renders routinely. This area's values are taken from the installation where we specified the band in a box location. Normally this wouldn't need to be changed, but if we're pointing to an incorrect folder, it would appear red. Pressing Find Folders would set it correctly automatically. Some users may not hear audio when double-clicking on a selection in the Style Picker, Real Tracks Picker, or one of the other selection dialogs in the Band in a Box plugin. If this happens, we suggest that you set the Windows Audio output to the same output you are using with Pro Tools. If that doesn't help, go to Control Panel, Hardware and Sound, Sound, and go to the Playback tab. Now click on your audio output device and go to Properties. From Properties, click on the Advanced tab and make sure Allow Applications to Take Exclusive Control of the Device is disabled. After following these steps, you should be able to audition real tracks, real drums, styles, etc. from the Band in a Box plugin. Let's look a little closer at the features of the plugin with a Soul Pop project. To start with, it will be just like the other examples we saw earlier, but after those tracks are made, then I'm going to start adding more tracks, which will include some MIDI, maybe a loop, and a solo that will use the multi-riff feature. So here I am typing in a soul pop chord progression with jazzy chords like B-flat major 7, C minor 7, and F dominant, etc. And like before, now I'll load a style. I know I want something around 100 beats per minute, so I'll use the tempo filter in the style picker. I also know that I want a pop style, so I'll use the category filter to show pop styles. I think I'll choose a style with one of my favorite piano players, Miles Black, so I'll use an artist filter and type in his name. Now I'll preview some of the styles As before, we'll drag from the blue square to make multiple tracks in Pro Tools. Now let's listen to a bit of the song. In the plugin on the right side of some of the tracks, there are little yellow squares with notes on them. This means that these tracks have MIDI data. For the guitars and basses, this is mostly just useful for notation. But for the piano, this could actually be very useful right in this project. I want a bigger piano sound, and Pro Tools has a great plugin called Mini Grand that I can use to achieve that. First, I'll create a new instrument track and load the Mini Grand plugin. Now I'll drag the yellow square in the Band in a Box plugin to my new instrument track. I'll play a little bit with the piano soloed and I'll change some of the settings in the Mini Grand plugin to get that big and bright piano sound that I'm looking for.
Let's add a modern pop flavor to this with a loop. I'll go to the select menu and choose the loop option, then find a pop loop that works well with this song. I will filter the loops with the search string pop and double click on them to preview them. I really like this reminisce loop, so I'll load that one and generate it alone. Once it's done generating, I'll drag it into my project. And that definitely adds a modern edge to my mix. I'll create some excitement by adding a jazz soul guitar solo. I could let Bound in a Box generate a great solo by itself, but I want a little bit more control over it, so I'm going to use the multi riff feature to generate seven different tracks of the same guitar soloist and pick the parts that I like the best. I know that we have a great Brent Mason soul soloist that is around this tempo. So I'll select the real track from the real tracks picker. Before we proceed with the multi riff feature, let's take a moment to show you how the different tracks are laid out within the plugin. We now have tracks of various types loaded in the song. There are three main sections accessible with the scroll wheel. On top we have the style tracks all of the tracks that are specifically loaded with the Robson style. Then in the middle we have the special tracks, and we have the one special loops track. Individually picked real tracks, real drums, etc. would go here as well. And then the bottom section is the multi-riff section, which is what we just picked. Let's generate the multi-riffs now, and drag them in. Now we have seven instances of the same soloist playing different parts on separate tracks. If we tried to play them together, it would sound pretty bad. But the idea is that we can listen to them individually and either pick the one we like the best or piece together phrases from them if you want more control. For now, I'm going to listen to them all and select the one performance that I like best overall. And I think this one is perfect. Let's listen to the whole thing now. Pro Tools is a great DAW for audio mixing and editing, so I'm going to use some of its features to enhance my project in the last section of this video. The first thing I want to do is add some reverb to my guitars because they're sounding a bit dry. So I'm going to create one reverb plugin on an auxiliary track and use it for all my guitar tracks. This is a great way to save system resources and maintain a uniform reverb sound between different tracks. 
I'll go to Track, New, and create a new Stereo Aux track. I'm also going to create a Stereo Master Fader so I can monitor my mix levels. Now I'll put the master at the top of my tracks and name the aux track Reverb. Let's load a Reverb plugin in the first insert slot of the aux track. I'll use Dverb, which is included with Pro Tools. I could modify all of the settings to get the perfect reverb sound, but I'll use one of the factory presets, Medium Room, instead. I can close the plugin now. We're going to use the busing system in Pro Tools, which is essentially like using virtual patch chords. I'll set the input of the auxiliary track to bus 1, 2. Then I'll go to View, Edit Window Views, Sends A to E. As you can see, there's a new column in the Edit window called Sends A to E. I'll go to the first guitar track, click on Send Slot A, and navigate to Bus, Bus 1, 2, Stereo. This basically means that, in addition to sending the track to the track's output, we're also sending it to a virtual stereo connection called Bus 1 2. Now we'll see a fader pop up. It controls how much volume we are sending to Bus 1 2. I'll hold the Alt key and click on it to set the volume to 0 decibels. You can think of this fader as your reverb level control for the track. Now I need to do the same thing for the other guitar tracks. But instead of repeating all of those steps, I'll just hold the Alt key and drag the send that I created to the other tracks. Great, now let's listen to the reverb that we created. That's pretty good, but I think I want the solo to have a bit more reverb than the other tracks. So I'll open my send on the guitar solo track and increase the volume a little bit. That sounds much better. The next step will be adding a bit of warmth to the rhythm guitars. Because they are panned fairly far to the left and right, I want them to have a similar guitar tone, which will create a cool stereo effect. In order to do this, I'll use the virtual routing in the program again, but this time I'll route the main output of the tracks instead of using a send. They will be routed into a guitar plugin. I'll go to Track, New, and create a new stereo aux track again. This time I'll name it Amp. Then I'll load a plugin called Sansamp PSA1 and select a preset called 147 Preamp Speaker. Now I'll close the plugin and set the input of the auxiliary track to bus 3-4 and set the output of my two rhythm guitar tracks to bus 3-4 as well. Please note that your mixer value for these tracks will control the level that you are setting to bus 3-4 now. It may look like we're all hooked up, but there's one more thing that we need to do. I'll move the reverb send to the amp auxiliary instead of the original tracks. Otherwise our reverb will be applied to the original dry tracks. Now let's listen to these guitar tracks. You can quickly A-B the results by pressing the bypass button in the amp plugin. The perk of handling the rhythm guitars this way is that I can now use one fader to control the levels of both rhythm guitar tracks. The last step of this project, I want to create a section in the middle of the song where the piano plays alone. I could modify the waveforms to do this, but I want custom fades that I can only get through faders, so I'm going to use automation instead. From the mixer window, I'll click on the down arrow beside groups and select New Group. I'll make sure it's a Mix slash Edit Group, then add the bass, drums, guitar 1, guitar 2, and the drum loop. I'll name the group BDGGL and click on OK. Now that we've created this group, the included tracks will be linked in the Mix and Edit window. This means that anything we do to one of the tracks will happen to all of the tracks, which will be very useful when we want to fade all of them at once. Under Auto, I'll change the automation state from Read to Write. Now I'll go to Window and select Transport to bring up my transport controls. 
I'll change the starting bar to 33 because I want to have the piano playing alone by bar 35. Then I'll play the song and record the automation. Great, we're all done. Let's switch to the edit view and click on the drop down box that says waveform. We want to view the volume envelope instead, so we'll select volume. Now we can see the volume envelopes for all of the tracks in our group. If we decide that we don't like the volume automation, we can just select it and delete the volume nodes. Let's listen to the whole project now. Thanks for watching this tutorial on using the Band in a Box DAW plugin with Pro Tools. Have fun!